Leading up to this video, we've learned about who's currently using Neurotech and who might benefit from it in the future. We've looked at a multitude of different neurotechnologies used for stimulation, recording, and scanning. And we've delved into some of the history of the industry, covered basic neuroscience, and many of the current applications of neurotechnology. But, as with any emerging technology, there are potential risks that we have to consider ahead of time. We, as neurotechnologists, have a responsibility for considering the ethical and societal implications of the technologies that we are creating. Hi, I'm Colin Fosna, and in this video, we're going to look at the neural ethics through the lens of popular culture and media, talk about social issues, discuss where some of these technologies may go awry, and what potential long-term effects might arise from widespread use of neurotechnology. To start, let's take a look at how neurotechnology and brain-computer interfaces are portrayed in media to get an idea of where public sentiment currently stands. Science fiction is often a good, or at least useful, predictor of future technology, as it often inspires innovators to create. You don't have to look too far to find neurotech in brain interfaces in popular media. In several films, such as The Matrix, Ghost in the Shell, Inception, Total Recall, and Avatar, advanced BCI systems are the primary driving force of the narrative. There are several examples outside of film that make dystopian predictions about neurotechnology, such as the TV show Black Mirror, and several books. The underlying theme behind these works is that of a warning of where this technology may go. We will use many of these media examples as a vehicle to talk about neurotech ethics. Side note, if you're interested in this sort of thing, check out the media review playlist on the BCI Guys YouTube channel. In this series, we review neurotech media to discuss the different types of technologies used, how close we are to the applications used in the media, whether we think the technology will be possible, and the ethics of the technology. For now though, let's use some media examples to talk about many of the common neuroethical questions that we should all consider. Nearly all of these media examples generally paint a dystopian future for brain interface technologies. They tell us a story of thought manipulation or behavioral mind control, a loss of humanness through an over-reliance on technology, the ability for others to peer into our thoughts and memories, or other dangerous effects. This video contains spoilers for the following pieces, the Black Mirror episodes White Christmas and the entire history of you, and the films The Matrix and Iron Man. One of the great marvels of the last few decades was the creation and adoption of the internet. The internet provided a free and open way to share and express ideas, information, and build new things. This openness, however, has come with some perils, namely scams, computer viruses, and malware. While these are problematic today, they could be catastrophic when we use devices connected directly to our brains. In the White Christmas episode of the Netflix series Black Mirror, we see many of these concerns brought to light. Citizens of this futuristic society are equipped with ZI's technology, which allows them to record memories, stream experiences to others, and serves as the visual interface for most technology. In this future, ZI's has replaced smartphones and computers. Opening the episode, we are greeted with the main character, Matt Trent, viewing a live audiovisual feed from a client he is coaching in order to help him talk to women. Matt can communicate directly to his client through his brain. This quite obviously presents concerns about mind reading or coercion if put in the wrong hands. Perhaps the scariest part is that in the end it is revealed that government workers can view this information and use it against an individual in a court of law. To avoid these technical vulnerabilities, neurotechnologists should assess the degree to which potential adverse effects could harm the user. For example, while theft of brain data would certainly be problematic at any scale, if someone hacked into a modern EEG device, the effect they would have would be fairly minimal compared to the more advanced devices. Next, you should take additional safeguards to limit how technology is distributed. Who is allowed to administer or sell the device? Are there any physical safeguards like an override switch? You must create physical limitations on the technology that prevent or limit damage that an outside party can have like making it physically impossible for a stimulatory electrode to deliver a pulse over a certain intensity, making it less likely that a malicious controller could do harm. 
In a more subtle way, it may be possible for bad actors to influence the wearer's thoughts, giving hallucinations and changing political affiliations, or even more frightening, influencing people to commit crimes. Another potential step to lowering risk factors involves requesting government intervention. Individuals or organizations could lobby governments to include certain safeguards and regulations. In the United States, the Food and Drug Administration already classifies medical devices based on these criteria and requires extensive testing and transparency during development. Governments could grant individuals unlimited rights to access their brain data, similar to GDPR in the European Union, which gives Europeans full rights to access their online data at request. Informed consent and respect for persons are important concepts in human subject research. Respect for persons is the recognition of each individual as unique, free, and autonomous. Informed consent states that the user of the technology must understand what they are signing themselves up for, in simpler terms that they can understand. BCI users should be aware of the pros and cons of the technology that they are using and any potential alternatives that are available. They should understand how their information is being collected and used. Will this data be sold to advertisers? Can brain data be used against you in a court of law? And who owns your data? In the movie The Matrix, we can see the consequences of violating informed consent in a rather extreme way. In the movie, billions of humans are plugged into a simulation at birth, with no intent to inform them of their situation or offer alternatives. Once individuals are made aware of their situation, it clearly causes them significant distress. In fact, some characters in the film would rather that they had never been unplugged at all. It is imperative when designing neurotechnology that special care is made to be transparent and communicative. We expect that someday the non-medical benefits of neurotech will eventually outweigh the costs and risks that are present today. In this future, it might be common to purchase upgrades to your brain and body. Current companies like Neuralink, whose end goal is to merge the human brain with AI, are currently working on cognitive enhancement technologies that they hope will significantly increase human mental capacity. For many, this is a really exciting future as it means that they will be able to start to modify their bodies and brains and become exponentially more capable and productive. The dark side of this transformation is that it could facilitate a deeper divide between economic classes. For example, current invasive brain interfaces can cost millions of dollars to research and implant, but let's assume, through economies of scale, that in the future there will be a brain implant available for recreational use that costs $50,000, already a significant reduction in costs. The device would allow you to store and download memories, learn new, new skills faster, and search the web without the use of a screen. This would be, and please pardon the pun, a no-brainer, as long as you could afford it. The brain upgrades would further increase the wealthy's productivity, making them more valuable as employees. Eventually, those who couldn't afford to upgrade their brains would likely be relegated to lower-paying jobs and be seen as less intelligent. As in many other aspects of society, it is likely that these divisions would fall on racial and gender lines. Consider the film Iron Man. Tony Stark is a billionaire. He uses his wealth to create a super-powered exosuit that is controlled by his brain. Of course, he is the only one with the means to produce this type of technology. In any form of combat with another human, he has a very clear advantage. So how can we address this without slowing the advancement of technology? There are several routes that can be taken. Governments could provide subsidies to acquire these devices based on income. Companies could offer a wide range of products, similar to how smartphones are sold today, that have similar core functionality, but add additional bells and whistles to those who can afford to pay. Maybe anyone could get a device that can increase learning speed for a few thousand dollars. But if you wanted to play immersive video games, you'd have to reach deeper into your pockets. Widespread use of neurotechnology could also create a forced dependency for those who do not want to adopt it. If everyone that you were competing with in the workforce had extra ability, be it enhanced memory or increased capacity to learn, in order to land a job you would be required, or at least heavily incentivized, to invest in a neural interface. This may force the hands of many to purchase and implant this technology when they otherwise would be unwilling to do so. 
This phenomenon is certainly not new in regards to technological progress. In the modern world, it's almost impossible to compete in the workforce or interact socially without a laptop or a smartphone. This technological dependency would likely be increased if humans could exponentially enhance their own cognitive abilities. This dependency slope further exacerbates other ethical concerns with neurotech, as worries about being left behind might cause individuals, companies, and countries to overlook important ethical or safety concerns. This could be seen as a violation of respect for autonomy. Most neurotech in science fiction does not even deal with the question of adoption. It is assumed that once the ball gets rolling, the technology will reach widespread adoption for fear of being left behind. In the Black Mirror episode, The Entire History of You, it is very clear that almost everyone has a neural implant called the grain. The grain is implanted behind the ear and is necessary to interface with many modern technologies. It provides invaluable benefit to the user and gives them many advantages over others without a grain. As outside observers, however, we understand that in a society where anyone's memories can be recalled and displayed at any time can lead to a panopticon state. But since this tech has become so intertwined with daily life, the characters don't even question it. In fact, when the core group learns that a member of their group got her grain removed, they look down on her and think she's crazy to give it up. In this video, we brought up some basic moral questions of using neurotechnology. We looked at the future of neurotech and discussed how this technology could be used in a negative way. In our next video, Harrison will talk about the philosophy of neurotechnology, talk about cyborg theory, and discuss what it means to be human.